question. Will the real Dar Robinson please stand up? Number two. Come on, two. They are mostly the unsung heroes of pop culture. The one that Colt Seaver said made Eastwood look so fine. There are lots of Hollywood stuntmen, but only a few have broken out of the shadows of filmmaking and became known to many outside the film industry. One of the most famous to do that was stuntman Dar Robertson. Dar was born on March 26, 1947 in Los Angeles, California. In the late 50s, rock and roll wasn't the only thing sweeping across the country. The other was trampolines. Almost every home had one, and for a teenage Dar Robertson, it was no different. His father owned a gymnastic supply company that provided many trampolines across the country. This gave Dar lots of time to become an expert at the art of trampoline. He got so good that by the age of 13, Dar made the cover of Life magazine. When Dar uh, first started jumping on the trampoline, which is like eight years old, he took to it uh, very easily. Dar had kinesthetic sense, which means you know where you are when you're upside down. And uh, that makes it easy on later on in his jumps and everything that he always knew where he was uh, when he was any, any time in a, in a jump or in any stunt. No matter what happened to him, he would still know right where he was. In his early 20s, Dar started doing stunts for mostly TV shows and small budget films. In 1973, the film Papillon called for Steve McQueen's title character to jump 100 feet from a cliff into a river. This wasn't something just any stuntman could do, so film producers turned to Dar. After studying the cliff, Dar felt comfortable that this was the easy stunt, at least for him. That same year, Dar found himself on another major film, the Clint Eastwood film, Magnum Force. For this stunt role, he had a less impressive job, but still a dangerous one, as he would perform the motorcycle stunts in the film. But Dar wasn't always doing stunts for films. He performed a non-film stunt by driving his car off the cliff of the Grand Canyon and parachuting from the car. In 1979, Dar was set the world record for a free fall from a helicopter, dropping 311 feet onto an airbag. Always one to go bigger and better, Dar found himself on the set of the Christopher Plummer film, High Point. The story called for Dar to jump from the 700-foot tall CN Tower the world's tallest freestanding structure. Surely no airbag could be done from that height. You know, Mr. Kenny, I hate goodbyes. But... In the early days, Dar would meet and become friends with actor Burt Reynolds, who would often use Dar for his stunts in a film. One such stunt was for the film Sharky's Machine. There, Dar would have to jump 220 feet from the Atlanta Hyatt Hotel. It's the first time I've ever come out backwards uh, from this height. <laughs> and I, I figure I can hit the bag. I just kind of wonder how I'm going to hit it. Bob, I don't care how you hit it. As long as you get up, jump over, run over, and grab me afterwards and say it was fun all the way there. I promise. I promise. I hope so. This still holds the record for the highest freefall stunt ever performed from a building for a film. Anytime, Dar! Dar's going now. Dar's going now. One, four. In 
In 1985, Dar would team up again with Burt Reynolds and even star as the film's villain for the movie Stick. Dar said, well, I want to be an actor. And I thought, well, okay, so I said, well, I, well, somewhere down the line, I'll find a part for you where you can act and eventually we'll blow you out of, out of window or something. So uh, this script came along. I mean, it wasn't a small part, it was a big part. I was concerned about whether he could do it, but I wasn't nearly as concerned as the studio was. This time, the climax to the film called Stick would be from the 22nd floor of a Miami building. Both Dar and Burt wanted the killer's death scene to be so original, it would stun the sophisticated action movie fans. What Dar came up with was truly a film first. Why don't you push real hard? You might hit the water. At the end of that film, Dar would fall from a hotel balcony. As he falls, he would fire his gun into the air. Due to the angle of this shot, Dar had to make the fall backwards with no airbag. Good boy, Dar. I tell you, my heart was in my throat. I mean, it was unbelievable. It was, uh, it was thrilling. It was terribly thrilling. It was scary. It was thrilling, and, and uh, I think every guy in the crew felt the same way I did. Everybody felt uh, like we'd all been a part of something that was quite unique. That is the world's tallest freestanding structure, the CN Tower in Toronto, Canada. Dar would return to the CN Tower in 1980. For a world record jump. I think when push came to shove, especially at CN Tower, I think, and all the delays, I think he was nervous and I think he was scared. What we're going to do this time is without a parachute, without an airbag, I'm going to jump from CN Tower with nothing but a small wire hooked to me. After test bags failed and wind issues, Dar made the record jump on August 12th. I am. Oh, what the jerk I am. Oh, what the jerk I am. Oh, what the jerk I am. Stop man's chant, gang. <laughs> Woo! Woo! All right, Kai. Yeah. Hey, man, I love you guys. I love you, Dar. All right. Ready, set, go. You ready? Ready? Set. He jumped 1,200 feet with only a steel cable, stopping him a short distance above the ground. Dar believed safety was the key to any stunt. He would go over stunts for days and weeks, getting everything just right. If you have to, jump back just a little bit, but don't jump forward, okay? If the least little thing was making a stunt unsafe, Dar and his team would go back to work to fix it. He would not do a stunt or allow any of his stunt team to do a stunt if he didn't feel it was 100% safe. Ow. In his 19 year career as a stuntman, he never broke one bone. I learned something early in life which made a lot of difference for me. Uh, rather than go up and jump off my roof, what I would do is I would start out and I would recommend this to anybody who wanted to jump off of anything. Go over and jump off your curb. Jump off a chair, jump off a small wall, build your way up. You would find that rather than get to the roof and jump off and get hurt, about halfway up you'd find that it's going to start to hurt, and if you hadn't done it, it would have hurt you. There's four million hidden in four different places. A million in each place. Federal agents, free. On November 21st, 1986, on the set of the film Million Dollar Mystery, Dark completed the main motorcycle stunt with ease, and the emergency medical staff was then dismissed from the set. The film only called for one routine high-speed run by the camera with other stuntmen. This was something easy that Dar had done hundreds of times before, but unlike those other times, this time something went wrong. At the curb, Dar lost control of his dirt bike in the sand. He was thrown from his Honda 600 dirt bike, falling down a 400-foot embankment, hitting a ledge, 
and was speared by a branch. The world's greatest stuntman lost control of his bike and flew over a 40-foot cliff, described here by John Hager, a lawyer for the movie's producers. The path that his motorcycle actually took is traced by these three brown circles and he left the roadway no evidence of skid marks uh, and went over this embankment and landed on this rock which is circled down here at the bottom of the uh, photograph okay at a speed of uh, in excess of 50 miles per hour when he actually hit the rock and the next thing he rolled off into the, the he was airborne and he, he was standing up and he let go of his bike and uh, as he was letting go, he, he, I heard him say, oh no. At the time of his death, Dar had three films that were set to be released. Dar's gone, but uh, he lived uh, probably more in his 39 years. Three of us. All three of them were dedicated to his memory. Cylon, Million Dollar Mystery, and the first lethal weapon ends with a text dedicating the film to one of the motion pictures industry's greatest stuntmen. I, I wanted his name on that screen. I just wanted to say thank you, Dora. Thank you, Dora, and thank you for all those others and probably all those that are going to follow him. Never, never, not in death, hopefully, but in the inventiveness and the, the creativeness that he brought to stunts. Ed, you want to try this? It'd be great for your hernia. <laughs> I want you to know this is a really fun ride. When are we going to do this? Uh, when are we going to do this? Do you want to do it now? I guess so. Are you, are you really ready? I think so. I don't know. I, I think we might have a little problem up here. <laughs> Dar would be credited for 38 films in his short career. Everyone that worked with Dar always had great things to say about the stuntman. It was that an aura or something about him that, that other people were, were uh, attracted to him in a sense, and there was a, a great deal of reverence for him and his work. Uh, but he didn't abuse it. He, he had a certain sense of himself. And uh, what impressed me, he had these uh, blue eyes that were real soft and sensitive, but could go right through you. Someone will probably come along and jump higher, jump faster, further. <sighs> he was aware of that, but for the time that he was here on this earth, he was the best, and he knew that. But Da was, uh, we, we went up with him, and he was, uh, he was doing all these diversionary things to take our mind off the fact that we were getting further and further away from the ground and he made it seem like a piece of cake of course it was for him he just he was having fun he was playing he was very childlike and i would um when i was up there i would look down and see the river look up and see the top of the bridge and look over there and see dar with the cable <laughs> and i remember telling a friend the next day that it was at that moment that i realized that if I had to pick one friend, <laughs> it'd be Dara Robinson. A lot of stuntmen are never known, and some stuntmen are never forgotten.